on guys, quick shout out to our gold level sponsors, Anglesey Family Chiropractic. They're out in Spokane Valley. They're also here in Coeur d'Alene. Go check them out. Dr. Craig Anglesey is amazing. He'll get you feeling nice and good. Cameron, you're an undefeated MMA fighter. You're just 19 years old. You're based out of South Africa, man. Thank you again for your time, man. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's awesome. I'd like to go back to the beginning with the fighters here. You know, uh, what was childhood like for you? Where did you grow up, man? I grew up in Pretoria, South Africa. It's okay. a pretty, it's a very chilled area. You know, a lot of schools, a lot of families. So I uh, grew up in an area called Hashentain, and I went to Hashentain Primary and High School and uh, played a lot of sports, uh, different sports, played rugby. Like rugby is a very big sport here in South Africa. Yeah. Um, also played cricket and did athletics and swimming and stuff like that. And then when I started MMA, I was probably 13 years old and then I decided to leave all my other sports for just to focus so, solely on that. Gotcha. And how did you actually yeah. transition into MMA? How'd you get into that? So it's actually an interesting story. Like um, my dad, he worked for Carnival City. Uh, it's a massive casino area which hosts uh, EFC Africa. Okay. Well, at that time it was EFC Africa and now it's EFC Worldwide. So they showcase some of the biggest um, African talents and that's how uh, I actually met up with Jukas as well so okay. I'm staying here at his house now training with him um, yeah and it's been a great journey so far <laughs> that's awesome man and yeah. I saw you mention in one of your videos at your debut your pro debut at EFC you were feeling kind of frantic you didn't look frantic you ended up winning like via TKO in a minute and a half there but uh, I yeah. mean how did it feel to get the first win out of the way and I think that was even in your hometown right yeah, it was in my hometown in Pretoria, uh, a few, maybe a kilometer or two, I don't know how many miles that, that is, but uh, very close to where I live as well. So it was actually kind of a, a twilight moment for me, for and sure. it was great. You know, I think there was a lot of pressure on me because uh, I was c going into the fight, I was the young gun, and uh, there was a lot of criticism about an 18-year-old turning pro um, you know, so the sport is quite new here in South Africa, so it's not it's not very heard of that it happens like that. But um, yeah. I'm glad, I'm so glad that I have an amazing team, definitely one of the best teams in the world, and um, I'm glad I could prep and finish the fight quick. Yeah, I mean, come on, in second fight, you got to finish in the second round via ground and pound there. I mean, how much yeah. confidence did you have going into that second fight, having that first one out of the way there? Yeah, definitely a lot of a lot more confidence. I think a lot of the pressure was also lifted off me. I knew what to expect, so um, I I actually craved that feeling again going in there and uh, seeing all the fans and the lights and you know. So and my credit to my opponent, he was very tough. I tried to take him out in the first round, yeah. but uh, he took some massive shots and he was also very aggressive with his counter strikes. So. It took me a little bit longer, but uh, yeah, we got it done. Come on, man. That's awesome. What do you feel backstage, man? Do you ever get scared or nervous at all? Never scared. Uh, I think I'm pretty, I just don't want to let my team down. I think that's the most important thing. But especially this last fight, I was very, very calm. Going into the fight, I, I knew exactly how many training sessions we've done. I have a strict diet sleep schedule training schedule so going into that fight i was very very confident um yeah and it was so cool getting the win for myself and my team yeah do you have any backstage uh, rituals or anything that you do before you walk out uh we we as a team we pray together and okay. uh, we just do the warm-up very calmly like an hour before the fight and uh, usually my coach will pat me down so he like hits my whole body just to get that those juices flowing getting yeah. nice and warm <laughs> and usually that is like a switch that goes off you know and then I was like okay let's go let's do this so I I enjoy I enjoy the whole process leading up to the fight it's so much fun and I can't wait for for the next one right you know fighting is such a mental game and it is a as a physical game what do you do to prepare mentally yeah. for your fights uh, I have a great mental coach. His name is Henny Engelbracht. Um, yeah, he works with us. He works with a lot of the fighters with Drickers as well. Okay. Um, so we do a lot of mental training. We go to him for advice. And actually the whole team in general, like I can 
Jake is, um, I think he has 16 or 17 professional fights. So he's a very experienced fighter. Um, the UFC is looking to sign him pretty soon as well. So he has made waves here in Africa and in KSW. So looking up to guys like that and learning from them is awesome. I'm very privileged to have guys like that around me. Yeah. What's the best advice that Drakus has given you? Definitely. And that's something that my head coach, Mornay Fisser, also tells us a lot is to have fun. Yeah. If, if you're not enjoying it, uh, you shouldn't be doing it. So I think that's definitely a thing that they say before every single fight. And um, yeah, I hope they keep on saying that just to remind me, you know what, <laughs> that, like the pressure, the pressure is pretty high, but yeah. you need to remember why you're here and that's to have fun. Come on. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, always an interesting question to ask, but who's an opponent or training partner that has hit you the hardest? That hit, that has hit me the hardest. Yeah. Like, oh, you definitely. Your, and, oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Without a doubt. Yeah. But we have some great guys. Um, he's fighting in the middleweight division. So he's also a very, he's a much bigger, bigger training partner. Right. Um, he's also, yeah, but we have guys like Gareth Bierski. We have guys like um, Marino Kutandana from Angola and Eric Samus from Angola, which are, they are so, so talented. But when it comes to hitting the hardest, Jacob, he takes that trophy, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> What's next for you, man? You got any fights lined up at all even uh, right now? Yeah. Yeah, because of the whole pa uh, pandemic, um, EFC has been working hard to focus on spreading the message of, you know, staying at home, not spreading the virus, flattening yeah. the curve. So they have all these campaigns. But uh, like I said, nothing has changed for us. We keep on training and they'll probably have an event two or three weeks after lockdown. Yeah. And I'll, be, I'll definitely look to be on that card. Sweet, man. Well, I want to do a transition to a few fun questions here for you. I've got these things are called pod decks. Essentially, they're just random questions for us podcasters. Okay, great. Hopefully they awesome. don't flop. <laughs> Okay, cool. No, let's see. I like the challenge. <laughs> well, this is an interesting question. It says, how would you like to die? <laughs> in my sleep. In your sleep. <laughs> I, I think, uh, yeah, I would like to die in my sleep. <laughs> That's a funny question. Right, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had that question come up on my show before. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you will. Like when fighting, you know, like um, it's definitely a mental challenge going into the fight. Yeah. Um, you have these thoughts of, you know, something can go wrong. And I think every single fight from amateurs up, I've made peace with the fact that, listen, this can be the last one. So, you know, um, <laughs> dying in the cage, I, I won't, uh, I won't wish for it. I would like right. to die at old age, but uh, sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite fighter that you like to follow? Drakus, definitely. Oh, Drakus, uh, okay. he, Drakus Duplessis, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I like learning from a lot of guys, um, a lot of popular fighters, guys that are not so popular but have had a big impact on how I have changed my fighting style and have mentally approached the fight. Um, but definitely, I, I was, I'm 19 years old now. I started with him from 14. So we've had a, a great, you know, four or five years training together. I've learned from him. So he's definitely up there <laughs> that's awesome and uh, when you're not fighting man what are you doing for fun for fun uh we well like i also so i have a, a program that we run for kids um cool. so if i'm not training not fighting i teach as well and i must say that is uh, i enjoy it so much i love teaching small kids so i have a academy program where we teach basic boxing wrestling and brazilian jiu-jitsu skills to uh, both boys and girls from ages four to 14. And um, yeah, I love doing that in my spare time. Other than that, going to the movies and stuff like that, eating, I love eating. So I cut, <laughs> I cut some weight for fights. Yeah. So if I'm not in camp, I love trying new foods and stuff like that. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. And I'm a music guy. So I always love to ask this question. What's a favorite type of music or, or do you have a favorite band that you like to listen to? Uh, I don't think I have a favorite band. I definitely love uh, rock music and we, yeah, we train on that a lot. So that's definitely my, my favorite. And I walk out with Sweet Home Alabama by Lynyrd Skynyrd. 
Come on, so, man. It's, yeah, it's such a fun song. And I think that also reminds me just to go have fun and just embrace it. So, yeah, I enjoy that a lot. <laughs> That's a great walkout song. dude. love that song. That was Thanks. so cool. <laughs> Wanted to also give you an opportunity to give a shout out to sponsors, coaches, teammates, anything like that. Man, the camera's all yours, brother. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. Thank you. I would like to shout out uh, Team CIT, the CIT Performance Institute in Hatfield, uh, Pretoria. So they have been my family since I was 14 years old, and I would not be here if it wasn't for my great coach, Mornay Fisser, and, Vickers, and all the team members at uh, Team CIT. And definitely our team sponsor, q for fuel They're a massive um, petroleum petrol company here in South Africa. And uh, during this pandemic, they've kept on working pretty hard to, to make sure that um, the people get what they need. So, yeah, shout out to them. Come on. Man, it's such an honor to have you on my show, Cameron. Like I said, you are Thank the you. first fighter I've been able to talk to in South Africa. And, that is uh, so awesome. <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> to see you so continue much. to just like continue to kick butt, man, and, and see you, you just I continue to it. win, man. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you for having me. It's been awesome. What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for watching this video today. I really appreciate it. If you could go and share this everywhere you can leave us a review leave us a rating we would really appreciate it that helps us get the word spread out about our podcast and about our show and we can bring you amazing stories of the people that we bring on for the bearded biz and the top rated mma show thank you again have an awesome day